The further back in the family you go, the less connected you'll feel to those that came before you. For the first 14 years of my life, I knew my great-grandma Sarah. She lived about 10 minutes away from my family in Milwaukee. I'd cut her grass, we'd go there every Sunday night for a big Italian dinner. Family holidays happened there, with aunts, uncles, and cousins coming from across the country for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Plus, there was always a tin of M&Ms for me to raid. I heard a handful of stories about Great Grandma Sarah from her life before I was born. That she came to Milwaukee from Sicily through Ellis Island. That she divorced her first husband, a bold decision at the time. That she turned down a marriage proposal from a known Milwaukee mobster. And that there was this song she recorded at some time in her life. Good night, sweetheart. In the last few years of her life, though, Great Grandma Sarah was sliding into dementia, further weakening the connection I had with her. She died when I was 14. Nearly two decades after Great Grandma Sarah passed away, I've become a researcher about contemporary immigration in the United States. I've started looking at my own family history, and specifically that of Great Grandma Sarah, how Italians like her were viewed as outsiders, as outside the boundaries of whiteness, and faced many of the same fears and prejudices that newer immigrant groups face. Some things I've found so far. On a baptism certificate for her daughter, my grandma Tony, she is listed as Rosaria instead of Sarah. She worked as a cosmetic salesperson during her life. Her maiden name is Sirni, which gives me something to go on if I travel to Sicily to find any still living relatives there. I found her naturalization document from 1940, by then a year when Italians were safely considered white. And I found out more about that record. Oh, I'll say she recorded this song in 1942 in a make-your-own record booth to send to her second husband, known to everybody as Grandpa Al, when he was serving as a cook in World War II. He wasn't responding to the numerous letters she had sent him. Hearing the record, Grandpa Al's army buddies made him write back. Yet the music behind her voice is not from the 1940s. My cousin Dean added some backing music in the 1980s, following the chords of the original song and Great Grandma Sarah's vocal line. Past and present generations of a family, connecting through documents and music. These discoveries, and those that will occur down the line as I do more research, are the only way I can connect to someone far enough back in my family's history that I never really got to know. Good night.